I mean, I can't reveal details, but I know for sure and you, when you're doing due diligence, you start looking at the healthcare expense, expenses just skyrocket near the end. And you're like, who is that? Oh, it's the owner. They're, they're, they're now charging too much to the healthcare and the healthcare premium is high. So you inherit, if there's, a, if there's a health problem, you inherit very high healthcare premiums. Mm -hmm. So you live with that. Yeah. The, uh, so what do you see the next, with high interest rates, what do you see the next two or three years, assuming they stay high for two or three or maybe forever now, vis-a-vis uh, -vis your uh, commercial bank finance? So I think that there's still a lot of opportunity to do commercial bank financing. But what I am seeing, because right now, um, we've gone through, I think, 15 or 16 banks in the last month, and we've done a presentation to all of them. We're waiting for about 12 of them to get back to us. We actually have term sheets from banks to do exactly what I want them to do, which is really good. But what I've also noticed is that a lot of the banks are backing away from the 100% free money, you know, no problem, here you go, they're happy to do a government contract. They're starting to want to have equity in the deal. Now, you have equity in the deal from your balance sheet. Mm -hmm. You have equity in the deal if the seller wants to finance a portion of it. Fortunately, we have equity because we've built up a lot of equity on our balance sheet. But they're starting to ask for checks of a million dollars or more for, to, for doing big loans. We see that now. We also see large banks, um, JP Morgan, right? Citizens Bank, uh, M&T Bank. We're seeing large banks saying, we'd like to see a sponsor. We'd like to see a private equity group in, in the mix. It doesn't mean that that's what they're demanding, but that's what they want to see. They're starting to make that noise. I think that they also believe that high interest rates are here for a while. I don't think that anybody's thinking we're going right back to zero anytime soon. From, from a financing and from a cost standpoint, doesn't matter. 10% interest rate, 5% interest rate, it doesn't matter. You build it into your price. Of course. So I, it's I understand that the, the yeah. kids are afraid of it. Yeah, 10% interest. I've modeled it with 10% interest rate. The other thing that's very interesting is that there's, set, there's a second layer of lenders out there, mezzanine financing. These tend to look a lot like seller notes. Big amount, balloon payment. You only pay interest. I don't mind paying 12% interest if I'm not paying back principal. I've modeled those out and they work just fine. So that market is starting to wake up because now... They're being seen as a, as, as, a, as, as a necessary component to bank financing. Uh, banks are also clubbing out deals. They're also doing multiple banks to club out a deal. So if you want to borrow something like $20 million, they want two banks involved. Now, when you say sponsor, did they want that private equity, uh, if, if that's what you choose, uh, because they, another set of eyes, professional, sophisticated investor eyes has looked at it, or just the fact that we uh, reduce their risk by somebody else's got equity? I think they just want to reduce their risk. I think, it and it depends who it is. I think if it's somebody that's never operated before, they probably want that second set of eyes on a board. They really want to make sure that somebody's paying attention. Mm -hmm. But if it's somebody that's really experienced, they just want to buy down their risk. And really, it's a market risk as opposed to an individual risk. They're just trying to, you know, they're just trying to uh, diversify their risk as much as possible. But government contracts have got to be at the top of the food chain. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And the amount of spending that's going to take place on DOD spending and defense, that's going to become ridiculous over the next three or four years. I have a thesis that says that that amount of spending is going to, it's going to skyrocket in the next two, three years. Well, I wouldn't uh, doubt it. Uh, and it'll probably skyrocket even more if Trump doesn't get thrown in jail or thrown out of the race. The, uh, but uh, I saw one poll. Um, now it was a Fox poll, so... I don't know how accurate it is, uh, that um, his base is uh, 20 or 18 or 20 percent more in favor um, because he didn't get convicted of rape and he only got convicted of whatever he got convicted of. Um, the, um, but as, he, as, as Mr. Trump said before the first election, I could shoot somebody in, on Broadway and I couldn't get convicted. Yeah, I know. I think he's sorry he said that now, but. But it's just another time where his alligator mouth overloaded his hummingbird ass. And having suffered from that myself, uh, but um, the, um, the, political, uh, the, the political overtones or undertones, depending on how you look at it, uh, are pretty remarkable. But, you know, you, you, since you were here, we've had some 
really successful uh, stories. Uh, the um, uh, text uh, from uh, Mesa, Arizona, uh, you know, $348 million in less than a year. Uh, the, the kid from Austria, who I, Gabriel, who I tease, who can't spell his own name, you know, and, and many, many, many others. Um, but the, um, and interest rates haven't, haven't bothered them, because you're right, if, if you model it correctly, I mean, you can go up to 15% interest rates. It's not gonna matter. No, it doesn't. Back in the 1980s, I know you remember this, back in the 1980s, interest rates were what, 16, 17 percent? 18, not People 18. were still buying houses. Correct. People were still financing businesses. You find a way. The prices come down. And that's the bottom line. And you can manage with high interest rates. I know. But and if you don't, if you don't do it, you're going to get left behind. You got to keep moving. Momentum at all times. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the, um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting to see... Um, Right now, uh, the UK, unfortunately, other than having inflation and uh, now perhaps the most liberal country in Europe, uh, is um, uh, they just raised interest rates again last this week or last week, uh, and the uh, and the Bank of England says that they don't foresee it changing anytime soon. Um, the uh, the chairman uh, of the Fed, um, uh, whether he stops it right or uh, inching up in interest rates or not. Well, you know, it's, it's conjecture. But notwithstanding all that, there's still plenty of money for us to do what we want need to do. And, 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 and the kids are uh, finding it out. Uh, and uh, I, I've said this before, but you never know um, uh, when a mouse gets his, his back against the wall. I mean, I'm not talking about you. You know, like a, a Peter Horasti, uh, and um, who, who couldn't spell. Uh, he's a mathematician, but that doesn't mean anything. It's, it's how hungry you are and how persevering you are and never giving up. If you give up, then the, the, the deal's dead, the model's dead, and you didn't want it that badly. Um, the the uh, 800 and some days, 800 what? 821 days to close the first deal. That's a long time. I've seen a lot longer, but that's a long time. Yeah. And of course, living that and your wife living that. Oh, yeah. In the middle of COVID. But she supported me, and it was great. We, we, we did everything right. Yeah, the, um, a lot of those uh, people, and you heard them say, oh, I've got my wife set my back or my girlfriend. So they're separated now or divorced. Yeah, yeah. And you see more divorce with the younger kids uh, than the older couples. You see more divorce. Of course, they don't have as much committed. They don't have as much on the line. But um, you, it, it's, it's interesting. And of course now, uh, 30, it'll be 30 years, the 23rd of this month, I gave my first seminar at the Sheraton Hotel in uh, Los Angeles. And of course we've seen all kinds come through, all kinds come through, we've seen all kinds of economic cycles. And the, um, it's, 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 it's quite amazing. But government contracts have always been there. It's gonna be there until, I mean, if that fails, we're in big trouble. Correct. We're in huge trouble. If the government fails to pay, you and I are, Doing something very okay, different. Okay, okay. The, um, and what about uh, the debt ceiling that's coming up? So that's always a big concern. I think everybody's, you know, living in fear on that drama. Um, I think that it's the usual Washington drama right now. That's what I think it is. I don't think that anybody has the temerity to actually let the United States default. I just don't think that it's there. Well, it, we've extended the uh, ceiling 50 some times, yeah. I think. Yeah. Nobody wants it on their, part of their uh, history or their legacy. But they let the United States yeah. default, right? So I can't see it happen. I mean, we see government shutdowns. I've lived through government shutdowns where you don't get paid or there's no work for three or four weeks. I've always found a way to keep my people billing, right? Because they're, they're necessary. They're necessary. They're doing necessary work, especially if you're inside the DOD or DHS. You're going to be necessary working uh, or, or you're going to be uh, required personnel. Um, I've lived through those. A, a default, though, nobody's ever seen this before. And I know a lot of people around us are talking about it and they're trying to figure out what the implications of a government default would be, but I, you can't spend time thinking about this. I think it's drama. The permutations are endless. Actually. Yeah, yeah. And nobody knows exactly how it's going no. if, if it happens, nobody knows how it's going to, you know, how it's going to unfold itself. Uh, it's going to be ugly if it is. But well, I mean, um, knock on wood. In the military, you get a paycheck every two weeks, or your bank account gets a paycheck every two weeks. And I, I, I can't, well, 
Anything's possible, but I, can't, I just don't see that happening. I hope not. Yeah. The, uh, um, the banks you, are worried. Oh, yeah. The banks are worried. Goldman Sachs is worried. Well, they, JP they, Morgan's they, worried. They get paid uh, to worry. They got a lot but, of money. But you'd, you'd think that their risk management uh, models were better, or should be better. Uh, just as you can model this stuff, they can model it. Oh, yeah. They're way better at it than I am. Yeah, and, and the... Uh, and you don't know their doomsday model. No. Um, that nobody wants to see happen. No. Okay. But the um, stranger things have happened. The, uh, but I don't, I don't foresee um, us uh, waking up like they did in Cyprus 20 years ago, where you had a million dollars in the bank on Friday, and on uh, Monday morning you had $500,000. I mean, and the shit would just, it'd be, the tsunami wouldn't be water, it would be diarrhea. Right, it'd be terrible. Yeah. It'd be like the 1930s again. Correct. Right, they confiscated everybody's gold and silver in the 1930s. That was unbelievable. Tax rates were 90%. It was unbelievable what happened in the 1930s. I facetiously said that they're going to confiscate Bitcoin. And then one of the smart asses in the audience said, well, they can't because of my wallet. And blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, you don't know what they can do and what they can't do. Uh, but um, what, what, what kind of message uh, uh, would you uh, like to uh, leave? And we're going to have you tonight, a Q&A, and then tomorrow you're going to give your uh, uh, lecture. Uh, uh, we'll have a little bit of Q&A at the end. What kind of message would you like to leave for the people that follow the, the Godfather series? I'll tell you one thing. The message is, number one, listen very closely to what Dan says, because he does have a very solid message. It is 99% perspiration. You just got to keep working. You got to work. It doesn't matter what you know. You've just got to keep working. You got to keep talking. You got to keep networking out there. And you've got to keep bidding low. You're going to find that low price deal that turns everything around for you. So this is all about tenacity and perspiration. Uh, I think it was Edison that said it was 90% perspiration and 10% inspiration. Well, for him, he was a genius. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to say that. I was just going to say that. For me, it's I, only 1%. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, and I told you, we've had people here with 80 IQs and people with 180 IQs, and the 80 IQ has done infinitely better than the 180 IQ, um, but you just have to keep, and that's why I say keep running towards a gunfire. And, um, and then just uh, uh, eventually it'll click, uh, and the embarrassing offer will make sense. And the th one of the things you, you brought up, uh, which I neglect to say, is that uh, the deal had collapsed. and Second boyfriend. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, yep. you, were, you were the... Awfully handsome after that second... Correct. After that deal collapses, and my deal still holds, and I'm willing to back up that deal, I'm awfully handsome all of a sudden. Correct. Correct. The 27-year-old uh, the, the kid, uh, Gabriel... Um, he thinks that he's, uh, um, it's not the money and the jet plane he flies around now that why he seems to be more attractive to women. So, uh, you know, he sat next to Sally at dinner and Sally looked at him and then looked at me and says, well, is this kid crazy? <laughs> and the fact that he, he, he just bought a Ferrari and he just this and that. And, uh, and, um, but anyway, uh, that's one of the things that uh, the benefit of being older uh, and less naive uh, but it's out there, kids. I want to thank you very much for your time. Thank and I look you. forward to tonight. Tonight, uh, we're having, you're having dinner with Sally and I. Tomorrow, uh, I'm having lunch with you. Okay? Uh, and um, the, you may have forgotten. I know you talked to the Viking bitch and some other people. But the, uh, who, on the scale of knowledge, is up here. And the, the level of questions you're going to get. Uh, you're more patient than I am anyway. But the, uh, it's, it's quite remarkable. Uh, they've already, you know started uh, to, to ask and we have um, we have four gals uh this week we have five which came as kind of a group from the netherlands uh and we have um the um we have a one navy active navy seal uh, uh and the um it'll be an interesting group thank you very much for your time thank very you good. okay thank and you. i Good's couldn't be you. prouder of you thank you Dan. okay i knew you wouldn't give up okay um, the, uh, the, you came back to back almost from the seminar to the... That's right, to Q&A. You were serious yeah. about the shit. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, hopefully, not hopefully, because hopeful, being hopeful isn't a strategy. Uh, some of that um, 
uh, tenacity will rub off um, because a lot of the kids lack it. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.